Hi. 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 <laughs> Constellation. Where should we have a going from? And join us on the exploring the beauty of the night sky. <laughs> night sky. He didn't know. Oh, oh my god. He didn't know. Oh, what? <laughs> to hopefully help you. For, to help. To help. To hopefully hope you. Help you catch the beauty. Oh my god. Please enjoy. Hi. Tonight we're going to photograph the nebulae inside the Orion constellation with our deep sky astrophotography rig, which is the Red Cap 51, the Nikon D3500 and the Skywatcher Star Adventurer Pro. We're going to guide you through some of the process of capturing the image to hopefully help you go on your own adventures capturing the beauty of the night sky. Yes! Okay, so we use Solarium to plan our astro images. And it's basically a way of seeing what's in the night sky and where it is on the computer. So when you load in, you've got the sky at your current location and time. And what we want to do is we want to go to date and time and we want to set it to when it's night. So around seven o'clock will do. And then if I bring up the search window, I can enter the Orion Nebula into it. And as you can see, it is there. And what I can do is if I go to the settings, I can uh, find the R camera in here, which is a Nikon D3500. And in telescopes, we've got the Red Cat 51 selected. So if I come up here and press this button, it will load up our field of view that's customized to our camera and telescope. So as you can see, we've got the Nikon D3500 and the Red Cat 51. So if we wanted to, we could uh, just frame up the Orion and Running Man Nebula or we could do the flame and horse head. But for this project, we want both. So if I come up to settings, I can then rotate the sensor. So I'll go to about 90 degrees. And as you can see, that's rotated the sensor. So this image is what we'll use as a reference tonight in the garden when we're framing up our target. This is when we align the star tracker to Polaris or the North Celestial Pole so that it can counteract the Earth's rotation. This is a crucial step because without it, the stars will trail and our target will be a blur across the frame. To do this, we align Polaris to the clock in the polar scope. This makes it so when we turn the tracker on, it can track the sky and counteract the Earth's rotation, allowing us to get long exposure images without the stars trailing. To make sure we are focused correctly, if we put a batten off mask on the end of the telescope. Is that going to do it? This creates diffraction spikes on any stars we look at, as seen here. Slightly, Slightly off. off. Yeah, okay. Okay. 
There's another focus in one. The aim of this is to get the middle diffraction spike to be as centered as possible between the other two. Nice. That's perfect. We then aim the scope at the target to try and line it up with what we made in Stellarium earlier. We take test shots at our desired exposure length, in this case it's 2 minutes, to make sure we're not having any issues with the equipment and to make sure our polar alignment is acceptable to get round stars. Safe, so PC and camera. Can you do a two minute test? Yeah. Pretty good. Zoom in. If you go straight to 200. Yeah. Just move it like down there. If it will let me, if it will allow me to drag it. I mean, um, they're pretty good. I don't think we've ever had it that good. We're not 200 now. Nice. Let's go Trace. up to. Yeah. Just about to see the flame, I think. No sign of the horse head, but you can't really expect that on that lower than no. I see. It's just that I can see a bit of a red smudge. Oh, yeah, where's that the flame? Okay, so after we've taken all of our images, we then put them into some software called Deep Sky Stacker, which will combine all of our photos to give us a better overall image. So this requires us to take uh, light frames, which are the actual photos of the sky, dark frames, which are taken with the lens cap on so we can capture just the noise, flat files or flat frames that just capture any dust or vignetting that we've got on the lens or the sensor so it can get rid of that and bias uh, another one done with the lens cap on so that it can get rid of the noise. So after we've gone into Deep Sky Stacker we have to load up all of our picture files. Uh, so I'll just go and do that now. Now that I've got all the lights, the darks, the flats and the biases loaded, I now have to load up all of the other night's nice data using the group tabs at the bottom here. So I will do that now. Now that I've loaded all of the frames that we've taken over the three nights we're out, I have to choose a reference frame that the stacker is going to stack all of the other frames on top of. So I'm going to choose uh, this one because the framing looks good so if I right click and click use as reference the stacker will now stack all the other photos on top of that frame there. Now that I've chosen our reference frame I need to uncheck all and then just check the reference frame so I can check how many stars are in it. So if I come over to advanced in the register settings I then compute the number of detected stars so I can see if we've got too many or not enough. The star detection is just finished and it's come with 369 stars. So for this I think that should be about right. 
so I'm going to leave it on 2% but if there was too many, I'd be able to move that slider up there and make it detect less. But I think 369 is fine. Now that I've done that, I have to come over here to check all. So the stack is going to stack all of our photos together. And I have to come over to register and hit OK. And it's going to show us how much exposure time we've got. So you can see on the first night, we've got 1 hour 56. Second night we got one hour 38, and the third night we got two hours. So that totals five hours and 34 minutes of exposure time. So I then just have to click OK, and it's gonna register all our pictures so it can figure out what angle to put them all at. And then it's gonna stack them where it actually puts the pictures together. And it's gonna give us a photo that we then have to process in Cyril and GIMP. So I will come back when that's done. The stack had just finished and this is the photo it's given us. So it, it doesn't look like a lot, but the detail is in there. We just need to process it in Cyril and Gimp, which is our next and final step of capturing the Orion Nebulae. Okay, so this is our stacked image out of Deep Sky Stacker. And uh, you're gonna see me putting it into software called Cyril to stretch it and do a color calibration. So what that means is I'm going to move the data from the left side of the histogram to the right to bring out the detail. And I'm going to do a colour calibration which will make sure all the colours are correct. And after that I'm going to put it in software called Starnet++ which will remove all the stars from the image. So that we can edit the nebulosity without messing up the stars. So you'll see me doing that in a second. I'm now putting it into Starnet and for no apparent reason it decided to fail and then it failed again and the third time it worked so here's the starless version and then we put it into software called GIMP where we did final touches on the nebulosity and then added the stars back in which is what I'm doing now and this is the final image. Thank you for watching, feel free to leave any questions in the comments below and if you have any adventures anytime soon, good luck and clear skies.